Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to paint something that I'm really excited about. A vast Italian landscape, but to make it even more interesting, we're going to view it through like a little column or doorway. Let's get started. Now we'll start by loading our three-quarter brush with a soft blue-gray color. And now, I did a few minutes of sketching here, and as you can see by all this mess, I didn't get it right the first time. So anyways, not important. Just, just worry about kind of your basic shape and, and then, then we'll think about our little landscape in here. Don't worry if you, if you don't get it right the first time because it's just, it's tricky. Some of these perspective things we do are tricky to, to deal with. So it takes a little while to figure out what's going on there. And plus that's the reason why we sketch. This is our charcoal pencil. Get it in there and decide if you like it. If you don't, change it. Head a little too small. There. And this is our, this is our little sky. It's gonna be stormy today. This area is gonna be like a building and we're looking through. Maybe this is like a city street, who knows? But I wanna look out over this landscape. This is the way to make this painting very interesting. And this is, I have just a little bit of clear gel and white in the middle here. Next, I'll mix together a very soft, light green color. And you notice that I just I'm pulling in a lot of random colors and that helps to gray my mixes down a little for the background. And now with this, let's go ahead and just work on our little rolling hills back here. There, maybe there, we'll bring it up a little bit. Good. Nice. And you just want these to be very soft shapes and soft colors. I don't know if this is really even the feature of the painting. It's more just the overall effect of looking through this thing that's going to be the feature. There. And I want you to add a whole bunch of colors. Throw some yellow, some red, white, and sprinkle them in like this at random. And that way you'll get a better effect. See this? Just random white areas, random, random yellow areas, random green areas. It's all good. Don't make patterns though. There. We can detail all this out in a minute with a, with a smaller brush. Now with a little pointed detail round brush, we're gonna drop in a decent amount of texture and form back here. This is simply too small of an area to use, to use the three quarter on to get this little sharp detail. And because this is really the only landscape portion and it's not very big compared to the canvas, we need to make sure that this area is detailed out properly. Now, this background, you would expect, well, I can't throw any details in there. Well, that's kind of true. These aren't really details. This is more texture than anything else. The lines and brush strokes going the correct way to suggest farms and mountains and meadows. Now, let me show you what I mean. We're not gonna paint bushes or trees. I'm just sliding my brush here to create a little farm. See that? Create the little rows in the farm. Oh, we can adjust these if we want to, but it kind of gets you started. There, I indicated just by touching a little bit of foliage back there, but don't sit there and make trees. Just touch with the brush and whatever shape you get is gonna be just fine. Now I want a dark area right here. Right here to separate. Use your darks as separators between each little, each little segment of land. Now a lighter color, right here in the, kind of the middle ground of our painting, or the landscape part at least. A lighter color in here can really make some of these farms stand out, some of these rows of crops. I'm sure these are grapes. And they're planted in these wonderful little rows which are kind of interesting to paint. For me personally, just a little bit tricky. I'm sure for some of you guys they'll be super easy. The reason? <laughs> I am not organized. I find it extremely easy to just paint loose, but to tighten up and actually have to do some specific rows of crops, I'm finding a little bit trickier. So, just depends on what kind of personality you are. That's the way painting goes. Some things are different for different people. And it's all good though, it's fun. Maybe right over here. 
get a little bit of yellow out on the brush. Let's, let's do there. Just a little highlight right here. Next with our filbert brush, we'll just drop in another row of grapes right here. See, I changed the filbert because I want just a touch of texture in here. Not a whole lot, but a bit. Enough to really show that these are getting a little closer. Good. And that's important. If you go and make the whole thing the same texture, it's going to look flat and you're not going to be satisfied. So be careful. Think about where you want your texture. And these are oil paints and they leave behind texture. So use it to your advantage. You don't have to smooth everything out perfectly. There. <laughs> this is fun. But you know what's really neat? We're almost done with our landscape and we're not even halfway done with the painting. That's so weird, but I, I love it. I love trying new things with you guys. Next, I'll go ahead and load up our filbert brush with a nice mix of black, brown, and white. There, it's a good dark brown gray color. And we're just gonna paint in the rest of our area here, the rest of our canvas. This is gonna be a wall. And I guess this is some sort of a city. Maybe this is the entrance to a city or I don't know, there's gotta be a reason for this, this gate here. There. And honestly, we'll let the viewer decide what all of this is for, and maybe it doesn't make any difference. For me, and I'm just skipping around here, for me, it's there because it's pretty and it works. And it makes for a very interesting composition. There. We're gonna really work on the stones and stuff in this painting, lots of stones. The street's going to be stone, and also these walls. So I think you'll just enjoy seeing how those are done. There, just scrub on a very little bit of paint. Too much paint here, and we're going to be in big trouble later. Now with our three-quarter brush, we're going to carefully drop in several stones up here. And this has got to be done pretty quickly. And don't, don't sit here and try to make it perfect, or you'll just go crazy. There, it's okay to have small ones because in my mind, they can't be too picky. This is probably really old and built with hand tools and all that, so. They're, and it's been weathered and stuff, so there's definitely gonna be some variation in these stones. There. Fun. And then this is just sort of setting us up. We can actually come back in and, and cut around each stone with a little dark. We have options. There. I'm not going too bright just yet. We'll highlight these stones in a minute. For now, I'm just working on the overall feel. Now, after looking at this, I decided I wanted to increase the overall highlight. So I'm gonna brush over just a bit of our, a little bit of yellow and white. There, and it's gonna mix with the, all the colors we have down and become softer. And I did destroy most of my bricks because they were just, they looked, you could tell what we did. And I don't necessarily want the viewer to know exactly how this was painted. So I think it's going to give a more authentic feel to the painting if we just, we kind of be loose and do some of these hard areas. But we're going to come back and cut in with a detail brush, some nice little, nice little lines in between the bricks. I think it's going to give us a more authentic look. So we'll try that. <laughs> there we go. We're all learning as we go along. It's, it's good. Now with our three quarter brush here, I'm going to just drop in a little bit of the underside of the bricks here at the top. I made some lighter bricks now. There's some darker, darker shadows coming in to show the angle there. Now, as you can see here, we don't have this opening dead center of the canvas, right? There's dead center, so there's more, more of it's on the left. And that's good because it helps to make the painting off balance. Also, so because we have that, we need to realize the perspective is gonna be larger here and skinnier here because we're viewing it almost kind of like through in this direction. There, it's subtle, it's not like, it's not a huge angle, but it's definitely something you have to look at, otherwise it won't, it's not gonna feel right at all. There. Now I'm gonna quickly drop in a few stones down here. These stones are foreshortened just a bit meaning that you're not viewing them flat like the wall here, but you're viewing them at an angle. So they're gonna be a lot slimmer. You see, I started to go like this, and then I realized, oops, that's not gonna work because that's more like a stone. I'm gonna give myself a, a slimmer angle. There, obviously some are bigger and some are smaller and all that's, 
Well, that's good stuff. We can, we can get all that in there. All right. I already brought in a couple of cast shadows, so that's good. Those areas are a little bit more wet than even the original underpainting. So we're going to have to be careful there that we don't get muddy colors, because obviously the more layers we've color we build up, the more difficult it is to paint. Now way back here, I'm just going to go for an overall effect of light. I'm not really going to worry about the little pavers back there. I may, however, I may, however, cut in just a couple of dark lines to indicate, but I certainly will not paint them all. There. Good, good. I like it. Our sunlight's coming across like this, so this wall, which extends out, might cast a shadow, but the sun's up here, and so you really have to use your imagination. That's why we get the light where we have it, so. If you don't kind of think about the light, it's just going to drive you nuts. And it probably won't turn out right. So think about the light. Oh yeah, get some color in there too. Why not? We can do that. In a painting is, see everything's similar? Throw some color. There. Why, can, why not? Why can't we have some color? It'll look pretty. There. And then go back to your other color and sort of, there. Melt them in. And again, we can kind of be loose about this and cut in little lines, which I think we'll do in just a few minutes. Now I'm going to place just a little highlight on a couple of pots out here. They don't have to be anywhere near perfect because simply we're going <laughs> to, we're going to paint some flowers in them and anywhere we don't think is perfect, we'll just cover. That's the way to do things like this because, oh, trying to get something just a pot sitting out here without a flower. Really, really tricky to get the perfect perspective on it. It'll always look a little lopsided unless you just spend a little long time on it. So that's sort of my thought. We'll stick some flowers in them and we won't have to worry about it. We'll paint a little looser. I like painting loose. I don't want to tighten up all the time. There. And we're just going to do this to well, a couple different areas. I want to put a little blue on the back side indicate a bit of a shadow. Nice. Now with our nice dark green on a detail round brush, I'm going to drop in some wonderful little leaves and bushes here. These are all going to be, for the most part, flowers. So this is going to be really cool. You need to think about the flowers, though, as you're going, just kind of think about where you're going to place them. Make life easy later on the road. All right, cover up the edges of the, all of the pots because we don't want people to, <laughs> we don't want people to see we only painted half a pot. And it's so much easier if you do it that way. Just don't worry about it. So many people would probably paint the pot perfectly just to cover it up. So I don't want you guys to do that. There. Maybe make this, yeah, make this a little taller here. Purposely cover up part of this building. We're gonna have a huge bush or maybe a flowering tree. I don't know, something growing all the way up here. There, right in here. Yeah, I see a little bit that kind of comes over the, I like this lip of the pot though, so I'm gonna leave that intact. Now with our pointed detail brush, I'm going to drop on here and there the effect of just a couple flowers. Now I don't want them everywhere and I don't want them all bright. Some are going to be dark. I'm going to start with red on this particular bush or tree. And on the other areas, I'm going to jump to some other colors. <laughs> Pretty simple, very fun. You're just suggesting flowers. So the only thing you have to worry about, you don't have to worry about painting a flower. All you have to worry about is not getting a symmetrical pattern. There. All right. Now, also, what you're going to want to do is take a little bit of yellow, green, and with the same brush, same idea, just drop on some leaves. And we are going to need to see individual leaves some of the time, like especially out here on the tip. But then as you come back into the plant, you can kind of, you know, get a little looser and get a little faster, but still leaving these suggestions of leaf clumps. You're doing that by just leaving some dark in there. Good. Now with our little detail round, I'm going to simply work on all the stones here. 
Now that everything's in, painting's nearly completed, I can easily see where we need to put these lines and where, like this area, we don't need to. So that way we don't waste time. These are not gonna be overly speedy. There, now try not to go and make repetitive patterns and I'm sure that would be an easy trap to fall into here. There, because just doing these shapes is kind of tedious. So, you know, you could slip right into a pattern mode. We don't wanna do that. Of course, if you do, you can always blend them in. Be very, very simple, no worries. So don't, don't stress. This is not difficult and it's super easy to undo. So no worries. Have fun. Always, always have fun when you do stuff like this, stuff that's new. Well, maybe this isn't new for you. It's new for me. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. And thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.